I have a few traffic lights kicking around that I'd collected over the years and I wanted to put together a bit of a demonstration unit for a group of kids at a school that I occasionally take an elective on Arduino with. I thought this would be a great way of showing the power of what you can do with an Arduino in a more practical and fun sense. So I began by finding a pole which I then painted yellow and all the associated hardware and painted them all black and basically began drilling a whole series of holes just to allow the various bolts to interconnect with the pole and also to run cables and things through the pole to uh, wire up the lights themselves. It was a lot, actually quite a lot of work. Drilling the holes exactly in the centre of the pole was quite difficult. I had a base made by a local engineering works uh, and painted it black as well. The idea is that the traffic light is really easy to install but also safe and secure once it's in place. So that meant drilling more holes through the base, in, uh, through the pole, and then using bolts to kind of securely fasten everything. I'm planning to drill holes into the base plate itself and actually have that bolted down to the floor of the tech room that it's going to go into. This project took me quite a little bit of time to actually get all the hardware together, and I, sc I scurried around all sorts of places to uh, find the bits that I needed to make this work. And with a bit of uh, mucking around, I managed to figure out a way to safely hold the lights, which don't weigh a huge amount, but they are reasonably weighty. The procedure of just getting all the hardware on is uh, probably took, took up way more time than I thought. finally got on to actually working on the other assemblies which included this switch. This is an actual working uh, switch that I got from a traffic supply company who was getting rid of them. And uh, I wanted to get the LED working as well as the switch but I found that the LED was actually you know, rectified for AC use so I pretty much uh, scrapped the, um, the existing works except for the switch and the wiring to the switch. I kept those elements. Anyway, it was uh, on to how to actually mount the button to the pole. I found it has a flange which has to, to sit inside the pole, which meant, which meant I had to dr drill a much bigger hole to uh, accept it. That took a little bit of doing and probably not the best way of handling one's drill bits, but it did get the job done. The drill that I used wasn't actually big enough to complete the actual task, though. I had to use a grinding die to actually grind it out even further. This took a bit of time as well. Once I had it fitted, I basically started threading all the cables through. I knew that this was going to take a bit of patience, and it did. It uh, took a bit of time to thread all the cabling through. I have used 240 volt cable right through, just because I want to make use of the better shielding properties of 240 volt cable, and to hopefully make it more rugged and durable as it gets sort of moved around. However, the intention is that we only use uh, 12 volts through it so that the entire pole has only got 12 volts in it and no 240 volts anywhere near it. Next was to actually fit the, uh, the button to the pole and that meant a, a few more holes to drill. Whenever I was drilling holes I always used a short stubby bit to uh, make sure that my holes were very much centered exactly where I needed them. Using a long drill bit is not a good idea because it tends to wander all over the place and not end up in the right spot. The final stage of this assembly at least was to just get it firmly attached to the pole and making sure the bolts actually held it tight. The pole is actually smaller than the original pole it's intended for but it seemed to work quite well here. Next stage was to terminate all the cabling and try and make use of as much of the existing wiring that led into the actual traffic lights themselves. Because I need to transport the entire unit to the school, I needed to be able to use connectors to uh, make it possible to disassemble just the traffic light and the pedestrian light from the pole. I had earlier on already removed most of the wiring out of the actual traffic light, but the pedestrian light was still in its original state, containing all the AC componentry which I wanted to remove. So the first step was to open it up and clear
clear out all the spiders and wasps nests and everything else that was stuck inside and then remove these uh, transformers and getting rid of any unnecessary cabling as well. I was pretty lucky with both the traffic light and the pedestrian light that, uh, that they were fairly functional units and they'd already been sort of retrofitted with what looks like MR16 style prong connectors to allow LED lights to be connected up. So I was pretty lucky. Here I'm just uh, re-terminating uh, new wires to elongate them and thread them back through uh, the traffic light down to a common spot, which then connects to the wires that go down the pole. I just uh, solder them using my sort of plumber's gas bottle. And um, here I'm testing, just continuity testing the wires and then labeling them so that I know what wire connects to where. And it was time to do a quick test. What I did is I connected up a nine volt battery just to briefly check to see that the uh, connections all work down to the uh, push button. And that's it. In the next episode, I'll work on the wiring and, and figure out how to build a little PCB together with an Arduino Nano and install it inside the push button enclosure.